two of the main companies we speak about this channel are Intel and AMD. They are perennial rivals. They try and beat each other, whether it comes to CPU, whether it comes to enterprise, now it's in AI and GPU. And, you know, over the years, it's got a bit aggressive. We've got one side uh, calling the other for cheating or benchmarking scandals or not testing to the right degree. And there have been some legal battles here. Kind of, um, despite the fact that some of it culminated into this license share agreement over a decade ago on the x86 and 64-bit architectures, the two companies are still battling out together every inch of the way, trying to get every one of your dollars and every percentage of that market share. So why would they work together? <laughs> Now, if there's one common element between the two companies, it's x86. Both companies produce x86 cores with different microarchitectures to essentially go after the same compute market and the same software. The thing is, over time, the companies have kind of diverged in what they think x86 should be like. And as a result, there have been some individual customizations on both sides that are independent of the other company. The big one that you may remember from uh, Time Memorial is ABX 512. It's a topic that seems to come up a lot on this channel. Intel initially um, implemented ABX 512 and then you know, rescinded back on the consumer side, and AMD decided to do ABX 512 in a very different way. Um, ABX 512 is a minefield of instructions. Uh, some are supported on some CPUs, some aren't supported, some get better performance this way, some are natively encoded, some are hardware encoded. The point is, it gives an element of fragmentation to x86 as a whole. And today's announcement is exactly going down that route to try and unify what Intel and AMD are doing to make sure that software developers have a common target between the two. Now, it's officially being called the x86 advisory group. At the head, you have Intel and AMD, and underneath, you have all the hardware and software vendors tasked with implementing x86. So we've got major software vendors uh, like Adobe and Oracle, but also hardware vendors like Dell and HP and everybody else that has to actually go and implement this stuff. The point of the advisory group is that Intel and AMD recognize that there are some challenges that they should work together on for the betterment of the software community. They should go after targets in a unified way, yet still being differentiated on the microarchitecture and how it's implemented, just so that when it comes time for software developers to go target, they don't have to put an if Intel do this, if AMD do this at least you know, from the instruction side of things. They may have to change some things with you know how loads and stores and prefetches are arranged, but the point is, if there's a unified approach to this, then developers don't have to go targeting the you know, software optimization um, documents for each platform as aggressively. Now, this is being announced at OCP, uh, Open Compute Platform Summit, there will be an Intel presentation followed by an AMD presentation. Uh, I think Justin Hotard is doing the Intel one and Forrest Norod is doing the AMD one. And then between the two, they'll come together, almost hugging it out essentially, to say that we recognize that this is something we should team up on despite being rivals. Now, there are a number of questions that I'm sure those of you who deal with this day in, day out might have. Does this mean that AMD and Intel will unify on stuff that's already out there? No. That answer is no. However, everything that comes forward, so there may be some convergence on x86s, and beyond that, uh, beyond I think they said like AVX 10.2, there will be some unification between what Intel and what AMD want to do in combination with what partners need the architecture to do. Now, this is a surefire shot across the bow towards ARM. ARM has a very unified ecosystem. Everybody uses ARM cores. ARM cores all have to support the same instructions. You have you know, ARM uh, V8, V8.2, V8.7, V9, V9.2, all with those different iterative feature sets that everybody kind of coalesces around. 
now when you've got a com uh, when you've got a customer architecture obviously you can implement your own and if you own the ecosystem that makes it beneficial what the x86 ecosystem instead is saying that we need to provide this unified front on board i asked about compilers and whether this would mean a push towards a unified compiler between say intel's high-end compiler that they use for all their spec scores and amd's aocc i think intel's actually just changed and it's called icx now um that was you know fairly recent in the last couple of years the answer i got is no there won't be a unified compiler but there will at least be a unified approach this still means that companies can go out and uh, essentially build libraries um, for their own microarchitectures to optimize for that performance and PowerPoint. However, that library will also work on the competition because the implementation um, from a code level should be very similar, if not identical. I also asked the question, what if there's a disagreement? And the point of this advisor group is that it's still very early stage right now. They're still in the process of forming. They acknowledge that there may be situations where the companies disagree on how to implement stuff. And as a result, they're still free to go and implement stuff differently. The point is, this is an advisory group, not a like implementations group or a standards body or a consortium in the sense that we've seen some of the other things in the industry, things like USB, things like PCIe, things like you know Thunderbolt and UCIe and UA Link and uh, Ultra Ethernet. This is different. This is just advisory because both companies recognize that need to work together, but also they still want to you know get all the market share they can out of them so yeah it's an important thing to happen the effects of which we won't feel for at least another two and a half three years it also extends to ai especially cpu ai so some of the vn and i you know into eight implementations maybe down the road there's some fpa implementations or fp4 or int4 or um you know, block float type support. When it comes to data formats, this is, I think, where it matters a lot because now we can ultimately get make sure that both companies get the same rounding, the same denormals, the same infinities as the other, despite things not necessarily being, say, like an IEEE standard. So that's going to be helpful long term. But otherwise, yeah, we're not really going to see the fruits of this for two and a half, three years. The one piece of advice they have been given is to make sure that as a community, as an industry, we get re regular updates on this. You know, at least every six months would be a good idea to see how far down the road they're going uh, with the advisory group, with the partners, and with the implementation, and ultimately what's coming down the pipe for the developers. It's interesting times that we're getting these two companies to work together um, in such a close way. Work together may be a stretch. It's an advisory group after all, but we'll see what happens. If you like this content, there are multiple ways to support the channel. You can like and subscribe this video, and many thanks for doing so. There's also a Patreon, which gives you access to our Discord. There's a merchandise store and a newsletter, links in the description. For all of you who do contribute, thank you. You are keeping me well fed.